This week, Vulcan Deck Masters playoffs happened, and you better believe some people played some Hearthstone. Archon Team League Championship Week 3 happened, question mark. Not a question, definitely happened, and uh, we've got some results and highlights for that. Blizzard announces Galaxy Gifts to the Samsung Galaxy S6, and that goes really well, opposite. Opposite of good. It went quite poorly. Top deck of the week. Ah. Uh. Uh. This week's Tavern Brawl and Count of the Crossroads, more like bad arena decks at the Crossroads. I'm in a lot of pain. And finally, BM of the week, this week, in Hearthstone. Oh, I can't. I can't turn my head. Hello and welcome to This Week in Hearthstone. I'm your host, uh, Jeffrey Primp. And boy, do we have a week of news for you, but nothing about the Hearthstone Foundry announcement because that happened after we wrote the episode and before we filmed it. So it's all very exciting, uh, but we'll be doing that next week. This week, however, Vulcan Deckmasters had its playoffs, a nearly two-month-long league involving 20 players across four pools, competing tooth and nail for $200 per match in a conquest-style best-of-three format. The top three players from each pool qualified for the playoffs, and the single top of each pool also qualified for a bye in round one. Topping out the pools, surprise Korean qualifier Surrender won four matches, taking home $800 from the pools alone, followed by Gara, Kalento, Nairia, and Trump, with three wins. And despite winning just as many matches as Trump, Gara did not receive a bye and was eliminated in round one. Ha! Sucked in Gara. Sorry. Trump went out in the end, taking out a festering rage deep inside him following his abysmal performance at ATLC Week 2 on an unsuspecting British qualifier, Cypher, going 5-1 in the Grand Finals. First place came with a tidy $16,000, which prompted an uncharacteristic spending spree from Trump, who allegedly bought some nice socks and an ironing board. He then allegedly ironed the socks and put them on while they were still toasty. In all seriousness, what would Trump spend $16,000 on? Uh, certainly not a haircut. I'm one to talk. Let's go to some highlights. I'm sorry, Trump, I like you. That's about it. I, mean, I think that the hunter's mark clear with the spider is is a play that you 100 percent have to make There's, you, you know you're you're literally lethal by that so i like playing high main here because uh it presents like a you know, obviously presents a big a big resilient threat in the board and you can <laughs> that, that stops you is houndmaster right right and you, know, you they, might even draw in anyway houndmaster and you still have the possibility of drawing like eviscerate or sap to beat it yes so I, I like this i like this poison attack flurry you make it extremely unlikely you can possibly die in your opponent's turn and you make it so that he has literally two outs in his deck to not die assuming he has two hound masters yeah i like it and strife crew needs to draw some taunt oh, oh just hound a hound master oh, oh my <laughs> god Strife's reaction he literally Falls back in his chair as he draws one of the only cards that could possibly win the game. Yeah, and that might be the pace that he needs to win the game. Surrender has to sprint next turn if he doesn't draw direct damage, and that gives him two turns. And Surrender is devastated. Oh dear. Oh well. Sap. Oh boy, but it's not over. It's not over. The game prep is pretty prep. good. Oh, surrender! You're, you hey, don't hey. don't rope, man. Come on. Oh, I think it's cams delayed. I think it's cams oh, delayed. Cam's delayed. <laughs> okay, well, eviscerate, oh. eviscerate or sap to win the game. No, fan doesn't. Oh, Drake doesn't. Oh. No. no. Oh. Eviscerate. Oh, the he got the eviscerate. Oh. <laughs> wow. Uh, the top deck combat survived. Surrender with the top deck sprint into eviscerate to win the game. That was wow. That was an incredible, incredible finish to an awesome series. How <laughs> cool. In an unexpected move by Archon this week, ATLC's third week kicked off this week, precisely one week after ATLC's second week last week. Week. Looking at the scoreboard, despite hot competition from Team Liquid, Nylum has taken the exclusive spot as the only undefeated team, which raises the question, will they be able to keep this up next week? That's right. Not just this week, sometimes we talk about next week as well. Force and Boys struck gold with their plan to make Trump lose six games last week, so perhaps there's hope. Brian, please don't call me Brian Kibler of Brian Kibler Gaming. Kibler of Brian Kibler Gaming continued to dominate this week, taking up the mantle of the only undefeated player. 
It'd be a shame to screw up now, Mr. Brian. Please don't call me Brian Kibler. Brian Kibler Gaming. Kibler. Brian Kibler Gaming. Isn't that right, Noodle? Let's go to some highlights. Kibler sees the wrath on the Cogmaster, oh. and I think he's pretty happy about <laughs> oh, that. Oh, man. That's this this is... Oh, oh my god. No oh, else. Keeper gets picked up. At, well, then again. But it's now there's a over. second. And there's a coin flame tongue totem. It. This is really ah. bad. Sir, do it. Zabomatic coin flame tongue. You have to. Kibler, if you don't do Kibler. that, we are, you, we, we are your lifelong fans if you do know. There was no answer to it. There's no way he can deal with the double Zabomatic. One of those <laughs> will survive. Like, there's no way a druid can clear both of them. <laughs> this Innervate Starfall, way. right? It's like one way. Or like point. Innervate Blood Mage Wrath. Point it! Kibler! Do it, point Kibler! Something. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Oh okay. my god! Okay, I'm taking screenshots right now. <laughs> Was the Wrath of Sandstorm being used on yeah. an inconsequential minion? If this Death Lord gets Valence Chills on it, Freeze Mage has to get a lot of damage onto it, or Doomsayer has to be super effective against it. It's good against Acolytes of Pain against, uh, if you're playing against, say, a patron deck and whatnot, you're gonna generally get value out of it against everything. Yeah. It's kind of like playing Stampede hmm. and Kodo and Pally as a one of. You're like, oh, this this is effective, and, pa like, Priest can use it even better. And Knife Juggler, so. That's a good point. Um, you know, you can not only kill the Doomsayer, you can kill Imp Gang bosses without triggering their. Oh, oh whoa, whoa, whoa! There it is! What a time to draw it. <laughs> Chucky even made a little small face. Wow. Like, mm, all right, well, don't mind game. if I do. That is sick. All right, well, that's the card he wanted to see most yeah. in the world, no doubt. First so Chucky actually is with us on the on this Shadow of Pain thing. <laughs> yeah. Now you just have to it. not misclick because you still can kill your own minion by accident. Okay. I know this is not the case at all, but I'd really love the next card was Inner Fire. Just to <laughs> smack him for twelve. That'd be so. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. One I wouldn't deck. be surprised as a one of. It's almost good. It's almost good enough. You can use it on Doomsayers with Shadow or Death if you have. So ice block, and then you do 13 damage, and you have pyroblast the next turn. Yeah. Seems and you solid. will have six. So Chaki is forced to have the light of the Naru. That's his last out here to survive. Is that even enough? Is it enough? With ice lance? Yeah, it's going to be it, marginally it be enough. enough right? It would be enough, yeah. The light of the Naru is his only draw. No. Oh, that's not it. Can he do anything with light bombing? No. Like kill his own... Kill Death Lord. Death Lord and then steal... No. Spawn, spawn a zombie chow, then kill a zombie chow, and then... <laughs> Where is that Kazan back? Mystic when you need it? Yeah. I don't think it was in their deck. I thought it, it was in... Like, it wasn't our deck. It, I believe it was in the Archons, Priest. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's right. Well, that's kind of amusing the way that works. The Archon put Kazan Mystic, and Force and Boys put it in Shadow Word Pain. <laughs> to each their oh. tech, basically. We don't know if uh, maybe Archon also plays Shadowward Pain. We might just have it. Wow. I remember the days of 8 mana Pyroblast. Those were the days. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Twitch chat made waves during that last match between Chucky and Fibat for pointing out the Death Lord stat line 416 is a perfect square. This marks the first time Twitch chat has ever said anything remotely intelligent about anything ever. Now, as a special treat, we have an exclusive interview with one of the players from the match. Here with the story is this week foreign correspondent, Jos Gonzales. Jos? So, Deathlord, how do you feel about that game, man? Yeah, no, I was, um... Look, with every game as a Deathlord, you're saying to yourself, I'm a 2-8, I've got taunt, my death rattle's complete s***. So I hit the board, and I was like, damn, 2-8, like, so big. And then, whap, 2-10. Wow, 212. Like, where can you even go from there? That's both your power word shields. They're gone. And I was like, man, this is fucking crazy. This is so fucking crazy. I'm a 212. Feel great right now. Um, and then, boom. Velen's chosen. 416. It was... I was so... I was a big minion. 
A little bit about myself. Um, my name's Death Lord. You can call me D Bangers if you want. I'm a two eight for three with taunt. And guess what? No downside, because I'm OP as sh. And if I die, whatever, mate. Whatever, mate. Whatever. What? Ever, mate. Give me a W. Give me an ever. Whatever. Trevor. I'm the fing Lord of Death. How sick is that? Clearly, by logic, we can pinpoint the fact that I'm a sick. It's in my name. That's literally my name. My name is Death Lord. Lord of Death. They don't just go around being like, hey, not sick. Do you want to be Lord? No, they fucking don't, because you're not a sick. Like this man right here. This is why people should put Death Lord in their decks, because I smack, hit the board, ready to fuck it up. You know, like fucking Hogger, he rocks up and he's like, yeah, no, I'll do it later. I'll do it later, at the end of the turn. You know, you can have a taunt at the end of the turn. I rock up and I'm there. I'm on the board. Fucking bang. Like, just straight up, like, immediately. Fucking you just got an extra eight health, you know, and no downside. No downside. Absolutely no downside to this, this, you can... Death, Death Lord. Death Lord, man, you lost. You didn't win the game. You lost that. You lost that game. No, no, no. I was, um, I was a 4-16. Yeah, you were pretty big, I know, but you you lost, man. You did not win that game. No, I'm a 416 taunt. It was it was freeze mage, man. You lost it. You got burned. You got burned bad. We lost. I don't know what to tell you. If I can be alive and someone can lose a game, I must not really be the Lord of Death. What am I? Death Lord, who are you? Who are you, Death Lord? What creature? Death Lord. Hey. Death Lord. Death Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Joes. Really cool stuff. Confusing, but really cool. Blizzard launched a partnership with Samsung this week, offering players a unique card back and three classic card packs if they ran Hearthstone on a Samsung Galaxy S6 model phone. Blizzard, already a prolific game developer, made history by turning Samsung into a game. Because everyone played them super hard by downloading an Android emulator and getting the packs entirely for free. Psst. Prolific and endlessly popular Hearthstone news show this week in Hearthstone sold out to Tempo Storm this week. Just ten days after host and all-round cool mustache guy Jeffrey Primp literally burned money on the program to show their disdain for any sort of sponsorship. Skeptical of the talks, the This Week representative, who has chosen to remain anonymous, managed to sneak a hidden camera into talks with the Tempo Storm representative. Be warned, this following exclusive content is rated S for salty, and some viewers may find it disturbing. And also, I am S for sorry for that really lame joke. Here's the footage. I was sweating bullets. You know, we concealed the camera perfectly underneath that mustache, but I was so worried he'd find it. And then when we entered the backyard, things got really weird. Oh no! Oh, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> oh, my guitars. Oh man, this is so... I was playing guitar earlier and, you know, I just, uh... You know, just hitting some strings and... Rainhead. Rainhead, talking please. to girls and, you know... This is the, uh... This is the squeak lever. Not many guitars have a squeak lever, you know? Gives the guitar a real squeaky tone. I have a croaky tone. This is really embarrassing. You know that I have a croaky tone? Renard, I don't care. At all. Yeah, I'll put them away. I think it was a flirting thing. I think he wanted me to think he was cool. Hey, how come you have chickens in your backyard? Oh, uh, yeah, that was a, uh, that was a bad pack. He's just so awkward. So basically, Tempo Storm is a company I founded because uh, none of the other casters would talk to me. Uh, they'd just call me names like Brown Nad, Virgin Nad, Rock Lee Nad. And I couldn't take it, so I made my own company in the corner by myself, and I feel like we're maybe kindred spirits. Please don't touch me. I'd really rather you don't touch me. Yeah. Okay. Hey, uh, tell me what happened next, man. It's hard to talk about. I think the footage speaks for itself. 
So uh, that's the deal if you want to take it. I mean, it you know, seems pretty fair to me. What do you think? Uh, look, I... No. I don't want to work with you at all. I'm getting salty, Primp. You won't like me when I'm salty. This week has assured us that the deal does not include any editorial interference, and as such, here's a list of things that Tempo Storm and Rainad would never allow us to say if they had any control over the show. Cool, Blizzard has tweeted another hint of the contents of the new Argent Tournament expansion, but the Foundry announcement thing happened uh, after we wrote the show, but before we filmed it. And everyone knows uh, a lot more than this whole bit. So let's just skip that and go to Top Deck of the Week. We're a professional show. Really professional. Top Deck of the Week. Don't cry, man. Don't cry for me. It's okay, Jess. Top deck flame strike, there it is. Okay, so I need holy fire. Or I think I have a wolf rider. Do I have a wolf rider? I don't know. But I'm dead if I don't get it. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Cool Aryan. Tavern Brawl! Tavern Brawl! Tavern Brawl! This week's Tavern Brawl, entitled Encounter at the Crossroads, taught players take control of completely random pre built decks consisting of 15 class and neutral cards, respectively. Using a groundbreaking new technology, Blizzard networked hundreds and thousands of grandmas together in an elaborate matrix where they ran arena drafts 24 hours a day to generate the terrible decks necessary for this lackluster event. The overwhelming response to the event was a shrug and quote, I guess it'd be fun for new players. Which is somewhat disappointing considering the staggering cost of human life it took to run. And that's it. That's the news for the week. Um, be sure to stick around for BM of the week. But let's plug some things. Plugs, plugs. Pluggy, pluggy, plug, plug. Um, be sure to check out uh, Tempo Storm's YouTube channel, which we are currently on. And they're supporting us and being oh so lovely. Um, if you'd like to see some other uh, nonsense Hearthstone content, be sure to check out our channel, Super Do The Games, right here. Um, if you would like to see me and my uh, Mexican cameraman, uh, Joe Sconzale, say hi, Joe. <laughs> Play video games, you can check us out at Jim and Nath, uh, Do The Games, right here. And if you would like to join us live for a stream, we will be streaming at these times, right here. Twitch.tv slash Do The Games, come check us out. I promise it'll be a fun time, and we really want to uh, get get a sub button going on. We want to be stream guys. It'll be really cool. Really cool. So that is this week on Hearthstone. Remember to stick around for BM of the Week. I've been your host, Jeffrey Primp. And remember, um, because a remember is just a friend you haven't forget. Thank you. I don't get it. Yeah, Fred, friend, stranger. Oh, go down! Well, it, it is a big deal, sort of. If if Life Coach had good cards here, uh, it would matter because then next turn he could go Jaraxxus, Hellfire, and Dark Bomb to just end the game with nine for man. So like, say somehow. Life Whoa. Coach finds a way back in. How does Life Coach actually finish this? That rope is ticking. This is this is a turn that requires much more time than that. I wonder if he got it. Oh no. Uh, it doesn't look like it. And that's just gonna be it. Yeah, he missed the uh the attack. Uh, oh, down the... goes Life Coach! 
Howdy. Stop trying to ship Ray Ray and Eloise. It's obvious that his one true love is Froden. Oh, your one true love is Froda. I understand this. <laughs> yeah. Did you did you hear that? I've never been bad to you, Ray Day. <laughs> never, Daniel. Can you feel